And Kaja Goo Goo again, creepy crawlers. Uh, as I so bear, we're going to see the where Shorty Shea was murdered by the Manson family, and also where he was buried for I believe seven years. Mm. This is my fourth or fifth time trying to make this video because I had information or names wrong or I didn't like how it came out. So this time, this is it. This has got to be good. Let's go. Okay, I got to do this quick because I'm parked in a no parking zone. Okay, Donald Jerome Shea had aspirations of becoming a Hollywood star when he moved from Massachusetts to uh, California, but he was more successful as a stuntman. George Spahn hired Shorty Shea to take care of the horses on his ranch. The two became very good friends. Spahn allowed Charlie and his family to move into the ranch, and in exchange for taking care of the horses, cleaning their stalls, he allowed them to live in the old movie set buildings. At first, Shorty Shea and Manson got along well, but it wasn't long until they started to clash. One of the reasons was Charlie was a racist. He referred to blacks as spades and blackie. Manson was so racist, in fact, that after Shorty Shea's black wife had sat in a chair, he told the rest of the family they couldn't sit in it because it was unclean. Now there's two reasons, I believe, why Shorty Shea was murdered. Manson thought he was a snitch who tipped off the police on August 16th, 1969, and the police raided uh, Spawn Ranch for stolen cars. The other reason is Shorty Shea had a female co-worker by the name of Wendy Buckley. Wendy was his cousin, but Shorty considered her his sister. The short version of this story is this. Manson wanted to borrow Wendy's truck, and Wendy said no. Manson demanded the keys, and again, Wendy said no. Manson punched her in the face so hard that it broke her jaw and sent her sprawling across the room. Shorty Shea found out, and he went searching for Manson. Once he found him, Manson allegedly came at him with a knife. Shorty Shea was over six feet tall and 200 pounds while Manson was barely five feet tall. Shorty Shea beat the crap out of him and left him bleeding on the asphalt. And for these two reasons, Shorty Shea was put on Manson's private hit list. Okay, gotta look at the paper. Around the end of August in 1969, Shorty was forced into the backseat of the car by Charlie Tex Watson, Bruce Davis, Steve Grogan, Bill Vance, and Larry Bailey. Once in the back seat of the car, Steve Clem Grogan hit Shorty on the head with a piece of pipe. Tex Watson began to stab Shorty repeatedly as they drove down the road and dumped his body in a ravine where they continued to stab and beat him. I'm going to take you there now. Okay, if you want to check this spot out, you'd park right here at Red Mesa Drive on Santa Susana Pass. It is legal to park here. And then, the marker to look for are those poles right there. Be very careful crossing Santa Susana Pass. It's always busy. So cross Santa Susana Pass. Uh-oh, car coming. They drove a short distance from Spawn Ranch to this location. They parked the car and amazingly, Shorty Shea was still alive and alert. They pulled him from the car and then dragged him down this embankment. Oop. They dumped his body in this gully. 
and left him there overnight. Allegedly, he was still alive the next morning. Bruce Davis stated that he sliced Shorty Shea from his armpit to his collarbone, while the rest of the men continued to stab and club Shorty Shea to death. Davis later bragged how Shorty Shea's body was cut up into nine pieces. Shea's body remained hidden until December 1977. While in prison, Steve Grogan, also known as Clem, drew a map to the remains of Shorty Shea's body. He wanted to disprove the rumor that Shorty Shea had been decapitated and cut into nine pieces. I guess he got a conscience. For giving the police this information, Steve Grogan was paroled on November 18th in 1985. The only Manson family member to be ever paroled. I'll show you where they moved his body. Down this path. They moved and buried his body right here where those rocks are. You can see that the rock has cut marks in it. That's from the police uh, digging into the rock while searching for Shorty Shea's body. The body was buried into the side of an embankment about 150 feet off the Santa Susana Pass Road, one mile west of Topanga Boulevard. L.A. County Sheriff's investigators received information to look in this area about six weeks ago. and have been digging along the hillside ever since. Sergeant Bill Gleason, who's been on this case for eight years, talked about the information that led the investigation to this particular site. Information we received in the past from various people who have since grown up, uh, when they were with the Manson family, they were very young, they've grown older, and they decided that now was the time to let Mr. Shea be found. Now, do you feel that this is the man? Uh, he is not beheaded. He looks like he is all in one piece, which goes against what was said during the trial. Well, that was just a rumor going around. I think that was uh, told by some of the so-called Manson family people just to make people uh, pay more attention to what they were doing or just to embellish on the death of Mr. Shea. How do you feel after being on this case for eight years? Well, I'm quite pleased that we finally found him. It's been quite a search. So if you wanted to come here, uh, park on Red Mesa Drive, look where the poles are. Step over the railing, you'll immediately see the creek where his body was first dumped and where he was murdered. You'll see a little path, follow that little path down. It'll take you here, and from here you'll see the train tracks. Shay's body was right there. Well, okay. I think I got it this time. I'm heading back up. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was a little different for me. Uh, more talking than anything else, but I wanted to provide more information and facts than uh, that are, instead of just showing you where and how to get to the place. Please subscribe to my channel. Like this video. There's other Manson family locations videos on this channel. I'm having a hard time talking today. And lots of abandoned places. Share my video, tell your friends, and until the next time, stay creepy. Oop, train. Ladies and gentlemen, Sumer has left the abandoned building.